Hi everyone. Today we're sitting on a couch in our space apartment watching TV. Oh, that's a problem. We have to deal with this. Yellow person Nodon seems to have been trying to enjoy retirement since I haven't needed him for a while in a video. But we aren't going to be done anytime soon. We need to help yellow person pilot this dormant rocket to a nearby ice planet to acquire food for his pet yeti. Our starting rocket is X1.2, Y2.4, Z1.2, and it's set to non-solid with a connection point of Z positive and center. We're going to be using a UFO as the character base to move the rocket, and it should be set to non-solid with a frame of reference for motion set to camera, and its movement speeds both set to 2. We'll use an X-hinge connector to connect the rocket to the UFO. Next, we'll get a constant set to an angle of negative 90, and that should attach the rocket to the UFO in a comfortable looking position. One of the reasons that we sent the frame of reference for motion on the UFO to camera is that the right stick will now easily control our rotation. We'll give ourselves some room to work here and then add in a teleport entrance and exit. The teleport entrance will attach to the person, set it to teleport the person object, and the teleport exit will attach to the UFO. We'll set the physics to reset with a launch speed of 1 in the Z negative direction. Next, we'll add a touch sensor with a size of 1.8 all around, and we'll attach that to the UFO. We're going to use this touch sensor to detect whether we're close enough to enter or exit the UFO. We'll add in a Y button press note on, and an AND note on, so that when we press our button and we're near the rocket, we can then enter it. We'll make sure that the touch sensor is checking for the person object, and we'll add in a flag. This will be our is in the rocket flag. We can have an AND node on set to the flag being on and the button press again to exit the UFO. So now we can get into our rocket. To prevent falling through the floor, we'll add a very small box that is set to solid and movable with a Y positive Y negative connection point and we'll make it very flat and attach it to the bottom of our UFO, so our rocket will now land on physical objects. We'll also switch our button press to an on press to prevent problems. The next thing we're going to do is control how the rocket propels itself forward. We'll use a ZR button press, and you can put that directly into the UFO forward, or you can send it through a multiplication node on with a constant of 2 to increase the value and make it go faster. So now when we press the ZR button, we'll propel ourselves forward in the rocket. The next thing to control is the up and down movement. In this case, I plan on using the up and down controls on the left stick. We'll add in a constant nodon of 0 to compare our stick value to. We'll then add two comparison nodons, with the stick set to the top input and the constant nodon set to the bottom. One will be set to less than and one to greater. If the stick output is greater than zero, then we'll send a positive signal to the UFO on the up-down input. And if it's less than, we'll send an inverted negative signal, which will tell the UFO to go down. That pretty much will take care of our up and down movement. Our vehicle right now is looking a little stiff as it moves through space, so we're going to play around with that X hinge value so that the rocket faces up and down when we go up or down. We'll make two extra copies of the original constant node on and give it two more variables. One that's negative 110 and one that's negative 75. We can then add a multiplication node on to act as a logic gate. When we're sending the signal to go up to the UFO, we want the negative 110 signal to go through. And when we're sending the signal to go down, we want to change that X hinge rotation to negative 75 instead. One way to check whether any signal has gone through is a digitized node on. When set to two steps, it will either be 0 or 1 if any signal is detected. So we can have a digitized node on with a not node on to check that if no input is received from the stick having a value of greater than or less than 1, then we'll feed the X hinge connector our neutral rotation.
The next thing we're going to do is pretty simple. I don't want the rocket to be flailing up and down when we're not in it. So we're going to create a wormhole entrance that takes the flag value of if we're in the rocket or not. And we're basically going to use multiply node on and run that in the rocket output through them and every signal we send into the UFO. That way, the UFO and the X hinge will only have an input go to them when we're in the rocket. I'm going over it pretty quickly because all we're doing is running every signal through a multiplication with that wormhole exit. The final thing we're going to add is a rocket boost for when you need to go faster. When we'll do this by means of adding a moving box. We'll turn all of its property settings off and have a connection point of center center with a frame of reference set to local and a mode of speed. Acceleration can get pretty crazy. Then we'll add in our button input, in this case ZL, and a multiplication node on so that we can multiply it by the force we want, in this case negative 20. We'll send that through another calculator which will take our is in rocket value and now when we press ZL we can apply a boost which will make things go really fast and pretty crazy. Our rocket is now complete and yellow person can go to the ice planet and get some food for his yeti. This rocket design is actually a simplified version of what I eventually built out into the Loftwang that I made a video on before. 